it is tough even just thinking about it. Students having to keep up with schoolwork without having a steady place to live or even sleep each night. But this is a reality for families like the Mestis family in Oakland. We introduced you to them last hour. The father and son have been struggling with homelessness for years. The boys are among the more than 1,700 hidden homeless who attend Oakland Public Schools. That number is up 70% from the pre-pandemic levels. Well, tonight, in part two of their story, we look at the critical help they're getting from the district and others. The East Oakland Community Project Shelter is a temporary home for David Mestis and his two sons. It's been a rough couple of years. My son's missed one year of school behind being homeless, you know, because we had nowhere to go. All our days consist of us trying to find somewhere to sleep and eat, living out of a car in a hotel. But they are trying their best to get back on track. I call it being resilient. <laughs> You've been here how long? This is home. Uh, yeah, this is home. We've been here for about 13, 13 months. You're all in one room? Yeah, we're all in one room. We share one room, uh, four bunks, me and the boys. Trish Anderson runs the McKinney Vento office at OUSD. It provides resources to the unhoused students that they know of. Do the teachers know that some of their students don't have homes? So some of the teachers know because it's based on relationships and sometimes the kids will share that they're homeless. But we let the kid do that. We don't ever want to out. Kim Neal is an academic counselor and makes personal visits to students in the district. This is the case that I carry around with me. And um, besides housing my phone to contact students and my computer, I also have bus tickets, which are really important for transportation. If they have an AC transit bus ticket, wherever they are, they can be able to get on the bus and get to school and get home because getting to school and back transportation is an issue. Anything over here is up for grabs. We get donations of clothing, shoes. Anderson says homeless numbers continue to rise, especially after the last eviction moratorium. And she says shelters are full and the scoring system to place families needs to change desperately. What's missing is there's no questions about the kids. They'll ask the mom or the parent how many kids you have, but they don't ask, is the kid autistic? Is the kid medically fragile? So that information is not a part of the score that gets a family into shelter. They say it's time to close the gaps and focus on homelessness as it relates to kids as well. Favorite subject? In like school? Yeah. Uh, probably history. I got zero missing assignments, but she don't like David's son says he's doing his best and David mm -hmm. says he and his boys are all making steady progress as a family. You and your brother, you guys stick together? Yeah, we've been with each other like a whole lives of like we never been away from each other for like a month. Like we always been with each other every day and like every hour. What's your dream for them? To not be in this way, to not make this home, to have a home like a regular home, <laughs> you know, and to not fall into this, the, where we're at now. Hopefully this will be a lesson to them to know that they like do whatever it takes to move forward. The Mestis family is amongst a growing group of hidden homeless. So why the rise and are there solutions? Earlier, I had a conversation with Jonathan Russell with the Bay Area Community Services. It's a group of advocates aimed at helping homeless students and their families. But first, here is why the numbers have gone up. Things have gotten hard through the pandemic and a lot of the temporary supports and protections and funding that flowed down to support households during that time is ending. So there really is a growth across the spectrum of need. So there's more of the hidden homeless, the unhoused, the school districts doing all they can. We highlighted that in our story. So what is the county doing? What are the what other resources to get these kids into housing? Well, the primary avenue to get connected for families uh, is similar to those that single adults. But there is a special system, a specific system that's focused focused on supporting families that are experiencing homelessness. And the best way for those families to get connected is through 211, which of course is the phone system that folks can access, can identify their need, their risk of homelessness, um, and the available resources can be connected from there. Folks can get assessed through the centralized system, specifically for families that will identify who's in the family, what are the ages, and then hopefully connected to available resources in their immediate area. 
And again, the number for help, 211. Here's a way we all can help on this Giving Tuesday. The OUSD McKinney Vento program needs warm clothes, including coats, hats, scarves, and gloves. You can drop off donations at 746 Grand Avenue, Portable A. You can also donate money to the program. That provides a range of services to homeless students in Oakland. We have posted a link in the story on our website, kpix.com.